Well, good morning, everybody. It is a chilly, chilly day out there today, but I am so glad that you braved the weather uh, to come out and be at church today. It's good to have you all. Good to have you ladies with us this morning. Thank you for braving the weather as well this morning coming out. Good to have you all with us this morning and uh, welcome to our services. We're going to get started by singing a hymn together. If you want to grab your red hymnals, grab your red hymnals, turn to three 41. Saved, saved, saved. Let's stand together this morning. Let's warm the church up with our singing this morning. Hymn number 341 in your red hymn book. Stand together as we sing all three verses of 341 this morning. I found a second verse if you can't sing out about your salvation i don't know what you can sing out about so sing it out this morning let's warm each other up as we sing on that second verse saved 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 this morning sing it out on the second he saved saved this morning let me hear you say amen. amen amen i'm so glad i'm saved this morning let's open our service this morning in a word of prayer brother john bates i know you're heading up but could you pray before you do father in heaven we thank you lord just for your, your just amazing grace amen and mercy that you share for us every morning lord and love you father i ask you to be with your service and we pray father that we'll be fed from you and amen whatever we need father in our lives pray that you give it to us today. Help our eyes to be open, our ears to be at hearing your word and attending. Love you, Father, just work among us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated again. Thank you all for braving the weather and being out here with us this morning. Man, uh, if you're not warm before, if you weren't warm before singing that song, you ought to be warm now because uh, you had to stretch your vocals to hit those last uh, three saved there. But uh, good to have you with us this morning. Let's get our bulletins out and take a look at our announcements for today. I do have a, a little bit of a list here for you this this morning. I do want to remind all of our ladies that the 25th of this month uh, will be another one of our ladies Bible studies and it's a wonderful time uh, for the ladies to get together into fellowship and to study the Word of God together. It is going to be just a wonderful time together as ladies. So ladies, please put this on your calendars for here at the church at 12 o'clock, and that's coming up this coming Thursday. So please uh, be here for that. Also, uh, I would like to remind, or, or I'd like to say this, I would like to have a Sunday school meeting this week and next week after the morning service. And this is going to be for all 
current teachers or soon-to-be teachers and future teachers. Anybody who uh, would possibly like to teach in the future, you want to be at this meeting so that you can learn more about the Sunday School programs here at this church and also Junior Church. So please, this week after the morning service, we will be having, and again, I would like to take this morning anyhow and just take about five minutes. So if you want to just meet me up here on these first few rows, I'd just like to take a few minutes to speak to you about Sunday School and about the importance of Sunday School. And if you are on the fence kind of about serving in Sunday School or serving in one of these capacities, please come to this meeting and we'll be talking a little bit about that. But then on the 28th, which is Vision Sunday, we're going to have another Sunday School meeting and we will have, uh, hopefully by then we will have our materials and I'm, I'm, I'd like to go over a few things there as well. And we'll meet over here in the Sunday School area after the service next Sunday night. So please remember that. Also, though, before uh, we have that meeting, uh, or this morning anyhow, we'll have the meeting up here, but uh, uh, next week we'll have it over there. But this morning after the service, uh, anybody who's ready to get their picture taken for the church directory, uh, if you are, uh, you've got, if you've got your uh, form there that's going to be filled out for that as well, uh, we're going to take pictures over there uh, by the green screen. If you're wondering why there's a green screen over there, it's for the, it's for uh, the directory pictures. So we'll be taking some of those after the service. If you're not ready for that, we'll also have it set up tonight. If you'd like to come by tonight and uh, take that picture tonight as well, that is fine as well. But I want to remind you of that. But also, uh, we will be doing that again on Vision Sunday next week as well. Uh, just want to remind everybody of that. If anybody has not been able to, we'll take those pictures real quick tomorrow, either before or after the service. So please be ready uh, for those. I want to also remind everybody of Super Saturday Soul Winning coming up, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. And I'm very excited about it. Uh, it is uh, coming up soon. Actually, that is this Saturday. I apologize. It is this Saturday, uh, Super Saturday Soul Winning. So please uh, make sure you're coming out for that, and, and it'll be a wonderful time. I believe the temperature is supposed to be warmer this weekend. All the snow is supposed to be gone. Amen. It's going to be a nice, uh, a balmy 42 degrees this coming Saturday. And man, we're all going to be in t-shirts and shorts going out and knocking on doors. It's going to be hot outside. But uh, please keep that in mind and be out here for Super Saturday Soul Winning, 10 o'clock this coming Saturday. And then, of course, one week from today, we have Vision Sunday, and I'm so excited about that. Uh, we're going to be uh, unveiling some new Sunday school programs that we're going to have, some new availability for Sunday school and some new classes that we're going to have there as well. And I'm very excited about it, so please be there for that. We're also going to be setting some goals for the year that we are going to be praying and, and, and working towards this year that we want to see God do. Uh, I know we have seen God do some amazing things last year. Uh, we saw, uh, I believe it was either six or seven souls got saved last year. Uh, we had, I think it was six folks that went through baptism. Uh, we had, I think uh, it was four folks that were in discipleship last year. Uh, and so I'd like to see the Lord do that again this year. Amen. So we're going to be setting some goals this year to see uh, the Lord reach those. And I know the Lord can do above and beyond those things. So please uh, come and, and, and be ready uh, for Vision Sunday next week as well. So uh, I'd like to remind everybody as well, real quick, I know I've got this uh, note here that was handed to me. Uh, ladies, you were given a form this morning uh, for the ladies' prayer partners. And uh, so what uh, has been given to me here, please make sure that you return those by next Sunday, those new uh, those new prayer partners will be starting in February. So please make sure you get that filled out and make sure you turn those in to Miss Marge uh, Sunday. Next Sunday is the cutoff for that. Make sure that you get in there, please. Uh, or Wednesday, just before before February, please make sure that you get that uh, back to Marge filled out and, and ready to go. So uh, again, I believe that's all the announcements that I have for today. Uh, let's move on. Let's get our hymn books back out. Hymn number 342. Hymn number 342 in your red hymn books, Only a Sinner Saved by Grace. Let's turn 342 in your red hymn books. We'll sing the first, the second, and the last together this morning. 342.
this morning. To God be the glory. You're only a sinner saved by grace. We're going to sing it on that second verse. Sing it out this morning. Only a sinner on that second verse. Once I was foolish and sinful, my heart caused me my first step from God to depart. Jesus has helped me, had me my case. I now am a sinner saved by grace. Only a sinner saved by grace. Only a sinner saved. all you ever are. What a wonderful thing to be. Just a sinner saved by grace. Amen. Wonderful song. I'm going to have our ushers come at this time if I can get a couple of men uh, to give me a hand with that this morning. This is a time that we get to give back as God has given to us. We missed a week uh, last week, but I'm glad that we're back together uh, where we can uh, have this together. Brother Jesse, they're up front here. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. But uh, this is just a time that we get to give back as God has given to us. Give God what He requires, and then we, can, we are able to go above and beyond that. And it is wonderful to be able to give back to Him. God has given us so much. Isn't it wonderful to be in a building today that is paid off, that has heat in it, that the lights are on, and we've got a sound machine that you can hear my voice this morning. Amen. Isn't it wonderful to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Uh, so let's give back to him as he's given to us. Let's have a word of prayer for the offering. Brother Jesse, would you pray for the offering this morning? Dear gracious and heavenly Father, thank you for this day you have given us. Thank you for the many blessings. Continue to watch over us, supply and eat our needs, Lord. You have given us so much. You gave your, your son who died on the cross for a bunch of sinners, Lord. Thank you for that, Lord. We bless you for that. Continue to meet the needs of this church. Guide us. Give us the wisdom that we need to follow your word as we hear and prepare ourselves and as the pastor gives us what we need to feed us, Lord. Thank you for him and his family and supply meet their needs as well. So we thank you for this church and the corner that it stands on and help us to be that lighthouse of this, this church, Lord, and for this community. We pray in your name. Amen. <laughs> Harris, let's get our, uh, our, sorry, let's get our song of the month out. It's on the back of your bulletin this morning. Our song of the month this morning. Let's get it out there on the back. There, may the Lord find us faithful. Let's stand together as we sing it. May the Lord find us faithful. Let's sing it out this morning. We'll just sing it through one time this morning.
welcome one another to the service this morning. Shake one another's hand. As we're making our way back to our seats, let's remain standing. We're going to turn to Exodus chapter number 3. We're going to do our scripture reading at this time. Exodus chapter number 3, verse number 1, is where we will begin together this morning. Exodus chapter number 3, verse number 1. It goes Genesis, Exodus, one of the first books of the Bible. Actually, it's the second book of the Bible. So let's go to Exodus chapter number 3. Let's all stand together as we uh, do our scripture reading together this morning. Exodus chapter 3, verse number 1. Exodus chapter number 3, verse number 1. That's where we'll begin. I'll read on verse number 1. If you'll join in with me on verse number 2. And we'll read one after the other all the way down through verse number 6 this morning. That's Exodus chapter number 3, beginning in verse number 1. If you're there this morning, say amen. 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 Exodus chapter 3, verse number 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place wherein whereon thou standest is holy ground. And altogether on verse number six. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Amen. You may be seated. Let's get our hymn books out one final time together this morning. Your red hymn books turn to number 339. I will sing the wondrous story, hymn number 339. We'll sing the first, the second, and the last together of hymn number 339. I will sing the wondrous story. I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me.
I'm going to dismiss all of the children uh, and the teachers for junior church downstairs at this time, and uh, they're going to have their lesson. Meanwhile, everybody else, if you'd please turn back with me to Exodus. Exodus chapter number 3. We'll be turning there while they make their way downstairs this morning. Go ahead. You guys can go that way. Exodus chapter number 3, verse number 1 is where we'll begin together. This is a message that the Lord uh, laid on my heart. Actually, it was, it was week before last, and uh, I've been excited to preach it, and I've been excited for what the Lord would allow us uh, to, to learn from it and to gain from this uh, message this morning. But Exodus chapter number 3 is where we will begin. I know in Wednesday nights we have been looking at the beginning, kind of, of the uh, faithfulness of God's people. We've been uh, focusing on uh, the, the uh, outcome of faithfulness. And then we've looked at last week, the last few weeks, we've looked at the consequences of unfaithfulness. And uh, it all kind of comes down to, uh, we came down to this place of looking at Moses just a little bit. But this morning, we're going to look quite a bit at Moses. How many of y'all have ever heard the Bible story of Moses? raise your hand this morning. Most of you in this room probably know who Moses is, and uh, you know that Moses was about as wishy-washy as it gets at the very beginning. He was back and forth like, well, uh, Lord, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? When God was just asking him to go and to be the deliverer of his people. So Exodus chapter number 3, verse number 1, we see uh, Moses now, he is no longer in Egypt. He has now fled Egypt. If you know the, the precursor to this story, you know uh, that Moses was, he was an Egyptian, not by birth, but by uh, his uh, mother who found him when he was a baby and, and raised him up in the Egyptian uh, way of, uh, of life. And uh, we see that Moses now has come to a point where he can no longer ignore what has taken place uh, to his, his people. He knows who his people are. And so he sees uh, one of his people being beaten. So he goes in and he kills the one who was beating his people. And then he ends up fleeing. And we see him now, uh, we come to chapter number three of Exodus. And he's now uh, uh, keeping the flock of his father-in-law in Midian. He's, he's over, uh, even, uh, he's now moving over closer to the mountain of God, uh, which is Horeb. But let's take a look here at Exodus chapter Chapter 3, verse number 1. It says here, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came unto the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. How many of you have ever seen a bush that has been on fire but that has not burnt up? I don't think any of us could raise our hands. I don't, I don't believe we could. So uh, needless to say, I'm sure Moses was coming to this scene and he notices this bush that was burning. And I don't know if it was giving off smoke. The Bible does not say yay or nay about that. But it does say that the bush was uh, as if it was on fire. And so I'm sure for Moses to come in here and, and coming to a place that very likely there would never have been many people. I'm sure coming to the backside of the desert, the place where nobody really would ever go, to all of a sudden be seeing this bush, I'm sure would set him uh, kind of a little bit anxious to see this. I, I know I would be. Uh, to come out uh, into the backyard of the church and to go back uh, maybe into the forest a ways and to see a bush that was just in the middle of nowhere where nobody else would ever be and it was just burning and burning and burning. And it never went out. It never burnt up. It was just burning. I'm sure for Moses that would have uh, very likely set him uh, uh, kind of a little bit on edge. And it says here in verse number 3, And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Those three words, here am I. I'd like to focus on those three words, and then I'm going to later on uh, focus on three other words in the late, latter part of the message this morning. But those first three words we see Moses say, he says, Here am I. He is hearing uh, the voice of the Lord, uh, or the voice of an angel anyhow, coming to him and saying, Moses, Mo they, don't, they know his name. 
And he's uh, obviously, I'm sure, kind of set on edge. Yeah, I don't know if he would have had any help with him, but to all of a sudden be maybe in a cave somewhere or on the backside of a mountain to see a bush being burned and all of a sudden hearing my name called out from the bush. I'd be pretty uh, set on edge there. But Moses says, here am I. Moses, as we see throughout Scripture, had what I believe to be one of the hardest jobs. He had a very difficult job. You look at the children of Israel and look at uh, how they acted under the leadership of Moses, and and you'll know what I mean about a very difficult job. If you've been a parent for any length of time, you know what it's like when you tell your children to do one thing and then they do the opposite. How many of y'all can attest to that this morning? I think all of us can. Even Natasha, who's not even two years old yet, I can tell her to do one thing, she'll look at me and smile and then do the opposite. Uh, I think every child is like that. I don't know if that's something that uh, uh, God put in there to teach uh, parents patience, or I don't know. All I know is that every child is, is, is that way. And, and for Moses, if you look at the children of Israel, they're exactly the same way, are they not? He says, or the Lord says, and then Moses tells them, and then what do they do? They do the exact opposite. And then, and then when God punishes them, they complain as to why they're being punished. How many of you were that child? You, you, you did something wrong and then got punished for it. And then we're like, well, oh, what happened? Why am I getting punished for this? I was that kid probably. I can, I can attest to that this morning. Got punished for it. And then, man, they're being so hard on me. What have I ever? I'm the perfect kid. I've never done anything wrong. I don't know about that. But that, that's the children of Israel for you. But the thing that's different about that is that the children of Israel were not all children. There were adults, there were older folks, there were younger folks, and Moses had to be the leader of all of them. He had to lead the people of God out of Egypt and then through the desert, but not only that, had to lead them through the desert for so many years that he did not even get to see the promised land. Again, because of his disobedience, but still, he did not even get to see the promised land. He did not get to see, of course, he went to uh, heaven to be with the Lord. I know he's up there, but still, he did not get to see the promised land that he had spent so much time looking for and searching for and, and, and making his way to. He had a very difficult job. We see, though, for Moses, at the very, very beginning of his ministry, at the very beginning of his calling that God has placed on his life, we see a contrast or a change or we really see two parts we see the beginning which we just looked at we see him uh, uh, say here am I but then we begin to see him say something else and we're going to get to that here in just a moment but we're going to take a look at this uh, difference this morning hopefully we'll gain some encouragement this morning as we serve God faithfully This message, maybe at the beginning, uh, will maybe seem like it's not an encouraging message, but don't worry, we're going to get to an encouraging point this morning, because I know this, uh, when we've got a snow day and we have to miss church, you can get very discouraged. I know uh, over the last week, I know we got to meet together on Wednesday, but hey, there's something about Sundays. There's something about not getting to meet together on Sundays. Even this morning, not getting to see that bus run, there's some discouragement there. But hey, let's see if we can get some encouragement this morning. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll get into it. Heavenly Father God, I thank you for allowing us to come together this morning. Lord, I pray that you just take control of your servant today. Lord, that I would not preach something that I just feel would sound good, Lord, but that I would preach whatever it is that you want to be preached this morning. Lord, that you would just take complete control of your servant, Lord, that my words would not be heard, Lord, or or the words that I've written down on paper here, Lord, would not be heard, but that your words and the word of God, Lord, your words that you've given to us, Lord, would come through and that your words would pierce the heart, Lord, Lord, that your words would do what needs to be done today. Lord, we need you. Help, you. help us as we go through this together today. In your name I pray. Amen. So we come to the very first part of our message this morning. And very simply, point number one is, here am I. Here am I. We're going to look at those three words. Here am I. And those are the first words. We see that in Genesis chapter number three, verse number four. When God, gives, uh, when God first comes to Moses... We see this, it says, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. These words, these three very simple words, 
call out that, that Moses uh, says to the Lord. He very, very simply and very plainly says, Here am I. Here am I. What does this show in Moses' life? What does it show? It shows a, a willingness to serve. A willingness to serve. Moses says, uh, Lord, I'm right here. I'm right here. He says, here am I. He hears the voice of God and sees the angel of the Lord as a fire in the bush. And in that moment, at that moment right there in his life, he's willing to say those words, here am I. Now Moses, up to this point in his life, he, again, he has not seen the hardship that God has in store for him with, uh, with dealing with the children of Israel. He doesn't know that, but still he has gone through quite a bit uh, previously in his life. He has had a difficult time, I know, yet he still says those words, here am I. I'd like to look at these three words and, and, and read a few different passages of Scripture of where these words come into play. Let's, go, let's turn to Genesis chapter number 22. You're in Genesis chapter 3. Let's look forward. Let's look ahead to Genesis chapter 22 and verse number 8. I'd like to look at the faithfulness of Abraham. The faithfulness of Abraham. We looked at this a couple of weeks ago on Wednesday night, looking at the outcome of faithfulness in Abraham's life. Genesis chapter 22, verse number 8, it says, And Abraham said, My son, this is him speaking to his son Isaac, it says here, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together, and they came to the place where God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of, the, out of, the, out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. Here am I. Let's look at verse number 12. What happens after he says, Here am I. It says, and he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. So the first time we see those three words, here am I, is Moses saying to God, I, I'm here, God, I'm, I'm willing. The second time we see Abraham about to kill his son because that's what God has asked of him to do. And he says, here am I, hoping that God will uh, possibly, maybe lead him away from killing his son. But what do we see here in those words of here am I from Abraham? We see faithfulness. He's saying, here am I, Lord. Whether He didn't say, here am I, Lord, please take this away from me so that I don't have to kill my son. No, he just says, here am I, Lord. He doesn't, uh, he, even Moses at the beginning doesn't say, here am I, Lord, as long as it's something that I'm okay with. What do we see? We see uh, uh, Abraham say, here am I in the heart of faithfulness, being faithful to God no matter what. Next we see in 1 Samuel, go ahead and turn there with me. 1 Samuel chapter number 3. 1 Samuel chapter number 3 and verse number 1. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse number 1. I'm going to read a few verses here. I was planning on reading the entire chapter, but uh, for sake of time this morning, I will not do that. Many of you know the story of Samuel. And many of you see the, the faithfulness here in 1 Samuel chapter number 3. It says here, I'm just going to read the, uh, a few verses here at the very beginning. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse number 1. It says here, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel laid down to sleep. And the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. Now, we see those words a few more times in this passage of Scripture. I'm not going to take the time to go into every single one of them. Uh, but we see here that, 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 that Samuel, young Samuel, in the ministry has, has, uh, has come to his mentor, Eli, and said, Here am I, 
what do you need me to do? And Samuel and Eli says, well, I haven't called you. So finally it happens a few more times. And Eli says, you know what? I recognize that this is the voice of the Lord. Just say, here am I. Here am I, Lord. And he says, I'm trying to think of the words that he says here. I'm going to get there in just a second. Where is it here? I lost it. I should have written it down in my notes. But anyhow, he says, uh, Here am I, speak for thy servant here. That's, that's, that was where the words, that was what I was looking for. I couldn't find it. I, I, had, I should have had that written down. But he says, uh, Here am I, speak for thy servant here. That's a, a, a words of willingness in young Samuel. We've, we have seen those were three words. Here am I, in Moses, his willingness to serve God. In, in Abraham, his willingness to do whatever God wants him to do in the spirit of faithfulness. And now we see it, number three, with Samuel saying, Speak, for thy servant heareth. Now the Lord ended up using Samuel to do some mighty things. He ended up using Abraham to do some mighty things. He ended up using Moses to do some mighty things. We also see those three words again, much later on in the Bible, from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 6, verse 8, I'll just read it for you here this morning. It says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Those words, here am I, often come with either a great leap of faith or ministry opportunity that the Lord is presenting to someone. We see uh, uh, Moses say, here am I, right after the Lord reaches out to him in that, in that burning bush and speaks to him. He did not know yet what the Lord had in store for him. But he said, here am I anyhow. We see uh, Abraham, who God used to do some very mighty things uh, as one of the original, uh, I'd say, founding fathers of our faith. God used him in a great way. And he even said those words, here am I. We see Samuel, uh, who was uh, a, a, a great uh, uh, prophet of God that God used to do some amazing things. And we see in Samuel, a very young man, uh, God reaches out to him and says, Samuel, and he says, here am I. And then we see as well in Isaiah, which Isaiah, if you've ever read Isaiah, there's quite a bit of prophecy in there that is even unfolding today. That has, much of it has, been, has taken place, but if you look at Isaiah, it's a book that's just stuffed full of prophecy. And God used Isaiah to do some amazing things as well. But we see here the faithfulness of each of God's uh, servants that when they said, Here am I, they went and did what God had asked for them to do. And what do we see? That God used them to do amazing things. Here am I. These men all heard the word of the Lord spoken to them. The Lord told them what it was that they needed to do. They were faithful to do what it was that God wanted them to do. And those words, here am I, were those words of willingness to be faithful. Willingness to be faithful. Each of these men, we see that uh, even in Abraham, we see his willingness to be faithful, even if it meant the death of his only son. He was willing to be faithful. What we need in our world today is some people and some Christians and some children of God to stand up and say, here am I. Say, here am I. Young and old or middle-aged, it doesn't matter. We just need some people to stand up and say, here am I. Just as what Abraham said and just as what, what Samuel said, just as what Isaiah said, just as what all these men said. And we, and we see, we're not looking at uh, saying, here am I, and then uh, we have no idea what's going to happen next. Hey, we know that when men of God or, or women of God or, or whatever it is, uh, when you say, here am I, Lord, use me, Lord, we know that God uses those. It doesn't... We, whatever it may be. We know that for Moses that meant that later on in his life he was going to have to uh, deal with the uh, most difficult group of people that we've ever seen in the Bible. The most uh, uh, complaining and most backbiting and most uh, betraying people that we've ever seen. Moses didn't know that, but he said, here am I at the beginning. We see for Abraham he was the father of nations. We see uh, uh, for uh, 
for Samuel. He became a great prophet for Isaiah. He was a great uh, prophet giving much prophecy. And uh, God used each of these men because they were willing to say those words, Here am I. Here am I, Lord. Use me. The second thing that we come to this morning not only are those, number one, those words of willingness, who am, or, 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 or here am I, we then see the words of doubt that often come after the words of willingness, those words, who am I? Who am I? Exodus chapter number 3, if you turn, there, turn back there with me, in verse number 7, you notice we read verses 1 through 6 before. We want to recognize the timeline as we're reading this passage of Scripture. Verses 1 through 6, we see uh, uh, Moses coming to this bush and, and God coming to Moses and saying, Moses, do this. Or, or Moses, I, 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 hear, I, I want you to be willing. And Moses says, here am I. And then just a few verses later, let's take a look at verse number 7 of Exodus chapter 3. It says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And have heard their cry by reason of their taskmakers, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land, and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Man, what a calling. What a calling has been placed on Moses' life at this time. I'm sure uh, Moses is, is either kneeling there or sitting there or standing there just, just, just looking and, and listening to what's, what the Lord is saying. And, and, and for anybody to hear you know, that their people are being oppressed and in and bondage and to hear, well, hey, there's a chance for them to get out, but I've got to go, I gotta go in front of the leader of uh, one of the most powerful leaders in the world. I don't know about you, but uh, I don't know if I could go up in front of uh, uh, some of these world leaders today and, and, uh, and uh, be confident in front of them. I just don't know if I could. But God tells Moses, not only was this Pharaoh the uh, uh, main ruler and leader of this nation of people of the Egyptians, but uh, really the Egyptians were a great, powerful nation at that time. And God says... I'm going to send you to Pharaoh. I've got something I want you to do, Moses. I've got something I need for you to do. Hey, you just said, here am I. Now get ready for it. i got something for you. Let's see what Moses says, though, in verse number 11. And Moses said unto God, Who am I? Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? We see what happens so often with so many Christians and so many of those who God has called into ministry or has called to do something. We see directly after we see that willingness, maybe uh, somebody has just come and surrendered their life to serving God or maybe it's somebody who served God for a long time, but they begin to get into self-doubt and say, Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Moses has just expressed his willingness to serve, and now, just a few verses later, he says, Who am I? There is a beginning of willingness, but then we begin to see that in Moses' life, self-doubt begins to set in. He begins to look at his own shortcomings and his failures, and he begins to say, Well, oh Lord, I, I, I can't speak to those people. I, I, don't, I don't know how to... I've got I to gotta stutter. I can't, I can't talk like that. Or I, just, I, I can't do it. I, I don't know how to talk to people. and I, I'm not, I, don't, I don't even know how to talk to you, Lord. I can, how am I supposed to talk to these people? And Moses begins to look at his own weaknesses, and doubt begins to set in. He then asks the question that so many, as they begin to feel the calling of God on their lives, ask. The devil, when God calls somebody, works harder than ever to get you to look inward instead of upward. 
I'll tell you this, if your pastor were to only ever look inward and look at my own strengths and my own weaknesses, weaknesses, I'll tell you right now, I'd never get up in front of you guys. I would never be at this pulpit. I'd never knock on one door. I've already said this so many times. I am an introvert of all introverts. I would love nothing better than to sit on the couch uh, uh, with a bowl of food in front of me and sit in front of the TV and do, do nothing all day and not talk to one person. That's me. And if all I ever did was sat down and looked inward and said, Oh, who am I? Who am I? I'm nobody. I could never do that. I could never preach. I could never knock on somebody's door. I could never do this. I could never do that. Who am I? I'm nobody. If all I ever did was look inward and say, Who am I? I would, I would never get off the couch. Doubt breeds fear. Fear breeds inaction. Inaction breeds stagnancy. And we already know what the Lord says about that. He talks to the church in, in Revelation and says, Because you were neither hot nor cold, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. God doesn't like stagnancy. People may look at those who have not served God or does, don't serve God, and, and maybe they look down on them and say, You know, why don't you just go serve God? Why don't you just do this? Why don't you just do that? Well, maybe the reasoning is because maybe the devil's gotten in there and said, well, who are you to do that? You're nobody. You're no good. I know you would look at Brother John and say, I'm not saying this is a joke, but you look at the background and say, well, what could you ever do for God? Look at all the, look at all the wrong that you've done. Look at all the, look at all the bad. What, what could you ever do for God? That's the devil. That's all that is. That's all that is. Because, hey, when you begin to look inward instead of upward, you begin to look at your own strength, and I'll say this, your own strength is nothing. But what does the Bible say? I can do some things, a few things, all things. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Hey, maybe you're saying this morning, hey, I could never, I could never, I could never be on a church bus. I, I, I could never teach Sunday school. I, 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 could never, I could never be the person to read uh, uh, the missionary letters on Wednesday nights. Uh, I, I could never stand up in front of everybody and give the announcements. I, I could never lead singing. Well, maybe you can't, but God can. Maybe you can't, but God can. Stop questioning yourself. Stop looking in and saying, who am I? Except for right now, I'm going to ask you, who are you this morning? Who are you this morning? Are you saved this morning? Are you on your way to heaven this morning? I've got news for you this morning, dear Christian. You don't have to ask, who am I, when it comes to the ministry that God has for you. Why is that? Well, that leads us to point number three. You are somebody to God. You are somebody to God. Inside of yourself, you might think, well, I'm just a nobody. Well, it's true, but with God, all things are possible. Sure. You are somebody with God. Matthew chapter 13, and I won't take the time to have you turn there. I'm just going to read it here. Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 through 46 say this again. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hidden in a field. The which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he hath found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Anytime the Bible says the kingdom of heaven is like unto, we know that we're going to get a little bit of insight. This passage tells us here of two very separate people who had something that was of great value to them. In one we see uh, uh, there was something of great value that they had found. One, uh, they had found something in a field. The other, they had found a pearl that was of great price. And in both stories, we see that they sold everything to obtain this one thing. It was, it was worth so much to them. It had so much worth to them that they gave everything for it. Now, why does that sound familiar? I feel like I've heard of that before. 
Let's look at, let's, let's look at a familiar verse this morning. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved. So loved. Look at that in, in, in Matthew. Think about that for a second. On the one hand, we see where there was a field that this man found a great treasure that it was hid in. And he found this great treasure and he, he, he went and, and he didn't just sell some things. It says that he sold all that he had. He sold everything to go and buy that piece of land and get that treasure. What about the one with the great pearl? He sees the pearl that was of, of, of great value. And he sees it and he says, this pearl, I, I've just got to have it. I'm going to sell everything that I have to get this one pearl. God looked down at you. He said, you are so worth it. You're so worth it. I'm going to give everything. I'm going to give up my only son. I'm going to have him die on that cross for you. You're so worth it. You are so loved that he gave everything. You are somebody to God. If you were not somebody to God this morning, he would not have sent his son to die on the cross for your sins. If you were a nobody to God, uh, He never would have sent His Son down to this earth. He never would have even thought twice. But the Bible says here that God so loved the world. That means that you this morning, God so loves you. God so loves you. Maybe this morning you're asking, who am I? Who am I? Maybe you're asking, well, why am I here? Why am I at church this morning? I'm here to tell you this morning that there's a Savior who died for you and who lives for you and has an individual plan for your life. Maybe you've never accepted that gift. Maybe you've never really understood what it means that you are somebody to God. Maybe you never understood what so loved means means that individually God loves you. God loves you. I'll tell you right now, if you're not saved and you're not on your way to heaven, right now the devil is putting thoughts in your mind. The devil is putting a thought in your mind right now. Well, well you'll never be good enough. Well, he's right. You'll never be good enough. But the Bible says that God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Doubt begins to set in again. You begin to wonder, who am I? Fear begins to rear its ugly head. Self-doubt begins to take over. Don't allow those things this morning to make you question who you are in Christ. You are a child of God. If you are born again and you've accepted Christ as your personal Savior, then this morning, bless God, you're on your way to heaven. You are a child of God. And God has a plan for your life. I'll tell you this morning, the devil in the world is going to give you every reason this morning to question who you are and why you are here today. Maybe even right now, he's placing doubt into your heart as to why you came. Nothing that is being put in your heart right now matters other than God has you here for a purpose. God has you here for a reason this morning. You didn't come to church this morning by chance. God puts you here for a reason. I'll tell you, God's got a plan for your life. He wants you to serve him. He wants to bless you. So I ask you again this morning, who are you? I'll say this morning, it doesn't matter who I say you are. It doesn't matter who your family says you are or who the devil tries to get you to think you are. God 
loves you. He gave his son for you, and you are somebody to him. Now let's go and live like it. Let's go and live like it. Exodus 3 verse 12 says this. This is right after. This is right after Moses asks, Who am I? It says here in verse number 12, And he said, Certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. God reminds Moses that he's with him. God reminds Moses and says, Hey, Moses, remember who you are. Moses, remember who I am. I'm the Lord. I'm the one who's going to lead you through. I'm the one who's going to be with you. Now go. Moses does not have to do what God wants him to do on his own. You don't have to do what God wants you to do on your own. Hey, God has a purpose for you here in this church. God has a purpose for you here on this earth. God has somebody that he wants you to talk to. God has somebody that he wants you to give the gospel to. But I want to remind you today that even when you're out on your own and, and giving out the gospel or knocking on doors, hey, it's not you. You're not alone when you go out there. You've got the Holy Spirit with you. You've got God with you. You've got the creator of all things right there next to you. Again, self-doubt begins to sink in. And again, the devil whispers that little thought in your ear. and says, well, who are you? Who do you say that you are? It makes you think about things that are irrelevant. It doesn't matter who you think you are. It matters who God thinks you are. And it matters what God says. God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. Again, the devil's going to do everything in his power to keep you from what God has for you. He's going to put the self-doubt in. He's going to make you start to question, well, who am I? What does God have for me? Oh, all these, all these things here and there. What is he doing? He's trying to get your eyes off of what the plan for today is for your life. Isaiah 6, verse 8. This is our verse for the week. It says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, here am I. Send me. Here am I, Lord. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Use me, God. Work in me. Whatever you want, Lord. Whatever it may be. Lord, here am I. Maybe there's some this morning that need to say, Lord, here am I. I've never, I've never accepted you as my Savior. Here am I, Lord. I'm coming. I'm going to humbly bow down before you. And I'm going to ask you to come and forgive me of my sins and take me to heaven with you when I die. Lord, I want you to come and live in me. Maybe there's some this morning that are wrestling with the ministry that God wants them to be in. And maybe this morning you just need to say, Here am I, Lord. I'm here to serve you, Lord. Whatever you want, guide me, direct me, show me what you want. Hey, it's not enough just to say, Here am I. Once you say, here am I, it's time to go do what God's called you to do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, I pray as we're about to have an invitation here, I pray that you'd work in hearts. Whatever your will would be during this time, Lord, I pray that it'd be done. I pray if there's one that does not know you as their Savior this morning, that they would come to know you. That they would not listen to the devil's lies of why not to get saved today, of why not to surrender to you today, Lord. And I pray that they would make a decision today. The altars are open. The piano is about to play. This is an opportunity. This is an opportunity as the piano plays and uh, as you come down this aisle and come down and, and, and kneel down and begin to pray and, and talk to God, this is an opportunity for you to say, Hear my Lord. Now, just as with Moses, you're going to begin to hear the voice of the devil and the voice of yourself, and you're going to begin to hear it, and he's going to say, don't come forward. Sit in your seat. Don't move. Don't pray to me. Don't, don't move an inch. Just stay right there. And that's exactly what the devil wants. As the Lord leaves, the piano is going to play. As it does, you come. Maybe you need to come down this morning and just say, here am I, Lord. 
I, I want to know you, Lord. I, I want to get saved this morning, Lord. I want to know who you are. I want to know personally today, Lord, that I'm going to heaven. Come on down to this altar right now. There's those all over this room that would love nothing less than to open up the Word of God and show you what it means to be saved and how you can know for sure you're going to heaven when you die. I know the devil right now is, is, is talking to you in your heart right now, saying, don't move. There's people around. They might see you. Don't listen to him. He's a liar. That's all he is. He's a dirty, rotten liar. Don't let that stop you from serving God today. Hey, maybe there's somebody in this room today who's saying, uh, uh, here, needs to say, here am I, Lord. I, I'm ready to serve you, God. I'm, I'm ready to do your will today, God. And hey, the devil's going to start to prick at your heart and say, don't, don't, come, don't, don't go to the altar. Don't, don't, don't surrender your life to God. Don't tell God you're going to serve him. The devil's a liar. He's going to lie and he's going to tell you everything that you want to hear to keep you from coming down the altar today. This altar is open. This invitation is open. You come. You come. Pianos continuing to play. The altars are still open. There's still time. There's still time. Don't let the devil lie to you and say that it doesn't matter. Don't let the devil lie to you and say that God won't use you because he will. Make a decision today to say, Here am I, Lord. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Here am I, Lord. I'll stand in the gap. I'll make up the hedge, Lord. Here am I, Lord. I'll serve you. If you speak into your heart this morning, you come. She's going to play through one more verse of the song and then we'll be done. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for meeting with us again this morning, Lord. I pray that the message as it was preached, Lord, would speak to hearts, Lord. If it, even if it doesn't speak right now, Lord, maybe it would come back later on today. And maybe it would speak to some hearts, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you would just work through the message, Lord. And I pray that you will have worked downstairs, Lord, as well. Lord, we need you. Lord, we desperately need you. I pray that you'd be with us this morning, Lord. Keep us safe as we go home. In your name I pray. Amen. Before we leave, let's get our hymn books out one more time. Hymn number 375. Let's stand together as we sing 375. Since Jesus came into my heart, we'll sing the first, the second, and the last this morning. Let's stand and sing hymn number 375.
us out this morning. How many of y'all have joy and peace in your heart since Jesus came into your heart? Give me an amen this morning if that's you. Amen. That was, that was, that was okay. We can try it again. Give me an amen this morning if you got joy in your heart. Amen. Let's sing it out on that second verse this morning. Good to have you again all this morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being faithful to the Lord this morning and coming and by coming to church. Don't forget, uh, I need anybody who has not gotten their picture yet and needs their picture for the directory to go over by the green screen and we'll snap that picture on your way out. So we're going to have a word of prayer to close out our service. Brother Ray Riggleman, would you close out our service in a word of prayer? <laughs> 